Hello, I'm the Rizlu Cartographer, and this is the story of what happened to Helvetia. We'll start with an examination of the sites surrounding Helvetia in the Fallout universe, and in the real world. We'll then move to the layout of the town in the Fallout universe, and how it compares to Helvetia in the real world. We'll examine the history of the town in the Fallout universe, and close with the history of Helvetia in the real world. That being said, let's get started. Southwest of Helvetia, one can find Sutton, where the Overseer of Vault 76 has taken up residence. In the real world, Sutton lies approximately 28 miles west-southwest of Helvetia. To the northwest of Helvetia in the Fallout universe, an old Slocum's Joe where a survivor of the Great War once rested can be found. Just northeast of that Slocum's Joe, the Gali Mine cuts a circuitous path through the ridge of hills. Up the hills to the north of Helvetia lies Arctos Pharma, the pre-war workplace of cutthroat raider boss David Thorpe. Northeast of Helvetia, amid a small neighborhood, lies Greg's Mine Supply. On the hillside overlooking Helvetia to the east, one can find Horizon's Rest, a crashed airliner that previous to the scorching served as a settlement, and now a haven for super mutants. Further up the hill past Horizon's Rest lies Relay Tower HN B112, also in the hands of super mutants. Southeast of Helvetia, the Tigert Water Treatment Plant that once served as the home base for researcher Amy Carey can be found. Just past the water treatment plant, one can find Poseidon Energy Substation PX02, one of three substations served by the Poseidon Energy Power Plant in Charleston. Up the hill to the south lies the East Kanawa Overlook, a ranger station also mentioned in my video on Sutton, as if the site is peripheral to both towns. Let's consider the locations near Helvetia in the real world that can be found in game. Other than Sutton, which I already mentioned, Flatwoods lies nearby as well. While in-game Flatwoods lies southwest of Helvetia, real-world Flatwoods can be found approximately 25 miles west of Helvetia. Spruce Knob, southeast of Helvetia, and the location of Foundation in-game can be found 36 miles east of Helvetia in the real world. Helvetia is the closest real-world municipality to Spruce Knob that can be found in the game. Helvetia is also not terribly far from the Philippi battlefield, but that lies closer to Grafton than to Helvetia. Summersville, found south of Helvetia in game, can be found approximately 46 miles southwest of Helvetia in the real world. With the sites around Helvetia covered, let's look at the layout of the town itself. In game, Helvetia lies on a river that flows south towards Lake Summersville. When attempting to figure out which river this is, we have a few things to consider. First, this river flows south from Morgantown, when real-world Morgantown lies on the Monongahela River, which flows north to meet the Allegheny to form the Ohio River at Pittsburgh. Second, the river flows into Lake Summersville, and prior to the destruction of the Lake Summersville Dam on Christmas Day 2082, it flowed on through Charleston. The real-world Gauley River flows into and out of Lake Summersville to meet the new river at Gauley Bridge to form the Kanawha River that flows through Charleston. Third, Real World Helvetia lies on the northward flowing Left Fork Buckhannon River, which meets the Right Fork Buckhannon River to form the Buckhannon River that flows into the Tigert Valley River, a tributary of the Monongahela River. Fourth, the Tigert Water Treatment Plant can be found just downstream of the town in game. The map of Appalachia and Fallout is very jumbled compared to the real world, so just as I speculated that the river flowing through in game flatwoods is the Elk slash Gauley River, and the river flowing through the Cranberry Bog is the Shenandoah slash Greenbrier River. My best guess is that this is the Buckhannon slash Tigert Valley River. Unfortunately, Google Maps at the time of speaking has an error that lists the Left Fork Buckhannon River as the Right Fork Left Fork Buckhannon River. I've reported it, so we'll see what happens. As for the streets and the general layout of the town, Helvetia is the closest in game to its real world counterpart. Real world Helvetia lies at the confluence of County Roads 45 and 46 locally known as Pickens Road and Helvetia Adolph Road, respectively. In-game Helvetia lies at the confluences of Highway 86B and 89, also locally known as Pickens Road and Helvetia Adolph Road, respectively. There are other residential streets in real-world Helvetia, but these are the two main roads. Beyond that, while most cities recreated in-game have been seriously altered in layout compared to their real-world version, Helvetia is fairly close to reality. Real-world Pickens Road runs east-northeast to tee into the northwest to southeast-oriented Helvetia Adolph Road, this is fairly close to how in-game Pickens Road runs east to tee into the north to south oriented Helvetia Adolph Road. Beyond the street layout, the placement of the river mimics the real world river, other than Upper Trout Run, which tees into the Left Fork Buckhannon River in the real world. Let's now consider the structures in in-game Helvetia, and how similar they are to their real world counterparts. In the Fallout universe, Helvetia is composed of a house, an inn, a restaurant, Freya's house, the cheese house, the honey house, a band hall, a band stand, 
a library slash bookstore, a community hall, a museum, a post office with outbuilding, and a church. Most of these structures can be found in the real world. The difference between real world Helvetia and its in-game counterpart is the real one has more houses for the town's residents, of which there were 59 for the 2010 census. Before getting into the history, let's cover a couple things related to the structures. First, let me just tell you how great a job they did modeling the Huta House, Culture House, Star Band Hall, Community Hall, this house across the street from the Huta House, and others that unfortunately I don't have images of because they're too far off the road. I don't want to take credit for someone else's work here, so I'm not going to put pictures that someone else took in this video other than Google itself, but I recommend that you look for these structures like the library, the cheese house, and the honey house on Google. Secondly, let's consider a strange thing. The inn doesn't have a single bathtub, shower, or toilet. Beyond that, there are spots for 32 room keys to hang on the wall behind the front desk, but there are only three rooms to rent. Just weird things to consider. With the layout and structures covered, let's get into the history of the town and the Fallout universe. Much like its real-world counterpart, Helvetia was a tourist town. The yearly Fosnock Parade would bring visitors from across the region to take part in the festivities. Just as the rest of the state was automating their processes, Helvetia automated the Fosnock Parade, with masked protectrons marching through the streets. The tourists seemed to have enjoyed the change, and the townspeople did too, as it reduced their workload. One side effect of this upgrade, though, was that the people of Helvetia lost control of when the parade would take place, and the robots ended up making that decision, both in terms of what time of year and how often it would take place. The effects of this were felt when it happened twice this year, with a second dose in October. Besides Fosnock, the town played up its Swiss heritage by ordering German-language books to sell in the bookstore, knowing that most couldn't read them, but they would appreciate the novelty. By mid-October 2077, the town was starting to settle into the quieter part of the year. Without the tourists around, it seems that something nefarious was being prepared in this tiny hamlet. Preparations were being made across Appalachia for the upcoming November 2nd, 2077 election. This election would decide two things. First, who would replace former Senator Sam Blackwell, who had vacated his seat that summer? And second, would the entire state government be automated? I talked more about this automation in my video on Eastern Regional Penitentiary. All you need to know for the purposes of this video is that the ballot measure, Proposition 6, would replace all human workers in the state government over the coming 10 years. This measure was heavily favored by industry, particularly by those manufacturers of the robots that would fill those roles, like Hornwright Industrial CEO Daniel Hornwright, who is lobbying hard for the proposition. In the small mountain town of Helvetia, there are 23 ballot printers. The entire election system was automated for the election and the ballot printers in Helvetia and across Appalachia were simply waiting for the electronic signal that would tell them it was time to start printing those ballots. The stacks of ballots these printers put out upon receiving the signal looked to be as thick as two standard reams of paper, or approximately 1,000 sheets tall. 23 machines, 1,000 ballots per machine, 23,000 ballots in a town with a population likely under 100. This is clearly odd. We don't know with certainty which ballot measure this excess of ballots was intended to swing. Two potential possibilities, though. Daniel Hornwright, trying to swing the ballot measure 6 his way, or some other group trying to swing it the other. Somehow the town did manage to afford all these parading robots that marched down Pickens Road each spring. And the second possibility? One of the few named inhabitants we know that lived in Helvetia before the bombs was named Ella. Ella can be a nickname for Ellen. And one of the two candidates to replace Senator Sam Blackwell was Ellen Jollitson. Was Ellen Jollitson planning to make use of these excess ballots to win her election? Just a couple of possibilities to consider. When the bombs came down on October 23rd, 2077, Helvetia was spared a direct strike, and it appears to have been left with a relatively lower radiation level than Morgantown to the north, but it did not escape the effects of the end of the world entirely. A driver racing south on Highway 89 overshot the bend of the road, causing his car to end up stuck on a stump. Shortly after this, the road became blocked by a landslide. The boulders knocked free from the roadside ridge by the mini nuclear detonation induced earth shaking. Crews arrived to clear the side of the slide, but abandoned it before they could finish. A Horizon Airlines flight, either knocked out of the air or unable to find a suitable landing site, slammed into the mountainside overlooking Helvetia from the east. The townspeople went to investigate, and they ended up deciding to move up the mountainside. One amongst them, Ella, led the rest of them in this move. They abandoned their old homes and built new ones on the clifftops and on the power pylon. Scavengers picked over the town, looking for useful goods. 
A group of raiders, known as the Reavers, moved through town, heading south to Summersville, noting that they found the town empty. In the absence of the original inhabitants, the Mothman cult moved into the church and turned it into a temple of the Mothman. Strangely, within the church there are two pulpits from which to speak, side by side. There is also a sacrificial altar under the effigy of the Mothman, this effigy built with a Fosnacht owl mask and Megasloth claws. As the Scorched and their winged allies spread across Appalachia in the mid to late 2090s, the outpost of Helvetians fell. In the town below, a survivor used a radio to try to find a place to go, but soon discovered that even the responders had fallen. The Scorched moved into the town and continued to occupy it to this day. Without the countervailing forces they faced from the responders and the Brotherhood of Steel, the super mutants of West Tech Huntersville moved across the region. Some of these hulking monsters made their home in the vacated outposts left behind by the fallen Helvetians. Having exited the vault in October 2102, the residents of Vault 76 became the first Fosnacht revelers at least since the Scorching, and we returned twice in 2103 as well. Alright, I think that's enough about the history of Helvetia and the Fallout universe, so let's talk about Helvetia in the real world. Before we get into this, I'll tell you that, like me, you can find some great information on contemporary Helvetia and its modern history in the Bitter Southerner article, One Year in Helvetia, West Virginia, by Emily Hillard. Getting into this though, let's get started with a name, Helvetia, what it means, and what its origins are. The founders of Helvetia, which we'll speak of more in a moment, were Swiss immigrants. Helvetia is the female personification of Switzerland, so that connection gets fairly obvious, but where does Switzerland get the name Helvetia? The answer lies in the name of a Celtic tribe from over 2,000 years ago, the Helvetii. The Helvetii once dwelled in what is now southern Germany. They were pushed south and up into the Alps by Germanic tribes in the 2nd century BC. As the Germanic tribes continued to harass them, the Helvetii attempted to migrate west into Gaul, modern-day France for those of you who missed your classical history. In March of 58 BC, 250,000 Helvetii began their trek west. Unfortunately for these Celts, their route would take them through Roman lands and the land of Roman allies, and the Roman governor of Cisalpine Gaul at the time did not permit them entry. The Helvetii were willing to fight for this land, but as another misfortune, the Roman governor they would have to fight was Gaius Julius Caesar. If there's anything you need to know about warfare in that time, it's that you don't pick a fight with Julius Caesar. The Helvetii were soundly defeated, and Caesar used its fighting as the impetus to conquer the rest of Gaul all the way up to the Rhine River. The Helvetii returned to the region and came under Roman control, becoming part of the Roman province of Gallia Belgica. One of modern Switzerland's names is Confederatio Helvetica, the Latin name for the Swiss Confederation. I probably butchered that pronunciation. Speaking of the Swiss Confederation, though, the founders of Helvetia, West Virginia, also paid homage to the more modern iteration of Switzerland in the name they gave their company of settlers. Let's back up just a tiny bit, though. In the years after the Civil War ended, a group of German and Swiss immigrants in Brooklyn, New York, decided to immigrate to the country. They named their company of settlers the Grootli Verein, a German name meaning Grootli Club or Grootli Society. Grootli, or Rootli, is the name of a mountain meadow on Lake Lucerne in Switzerland, where the original Swiss Confederation was formed in 1291. In 1869, the Grootli Verein dispatched a company of six men to West Virginia, traveling by rail to Clarksburg, where they arrived on October 15th. One of the company's members had surveyed parts of West Virginia, and his stories of the richness of the land had spurred their interest. They traveled through this rough and rugged terrain in a lightly settled part of Virginia, arriving at the future site of Helvetia on October 20th, 1869. The site was far from other settlements, yielding a good price for the Grootli Verein, and they decided to make the move. Hundreds of acres were purchased, 100 of which were set aside for the town itself. Amazingly, it seems that the settlement began at the time those first six men arrived, and I say amazingly, as it was already late October. But they managed to assemble rough, small log structures that housed them at the site through the winter of 1869 to 1870. The quality of these homes was improved by settlers when they had time. By 1871, 32 people lived in the area. After advertising for the settlement, the population rose to 308 by 1874. By the end of the 1870s, rough sawn lumber began to be used in the village. Helvetia's church was built in 1882 and utilized by the German Evangelical Reformed Church at Helvetia. The Huber Inn was built by Frank Huber in 1880, and in 1887 a man named August Vogel built a steam-powered sawmill in the area. The lumber from this mill comprises the oldest structures that still stand. I have to mention that one of the residents of Helvetia in the early 20th century was a Dr. Hans Gruber, the nephew of Franz Gruber, the Austrian composer of the Christmas Carol, Silent Night. This connection of a Hans Gruber to a Christmas Carol further proves that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Back to Helvetia though. The post office and storehouse was constructed in the 1920s. 
This structure is today known as the Culture House, and it houses a Fosnock Mass Museum, a general store, and a hotel. Though the town is a beacon of Germanic and Swiss culture, during the anti-German backlash of World War I and World War II, the town professed their pride in being American. The Swiss Museum, originally a log cabin built on a farm by one of the earliest settlers, was dismantled and reconstructed on the historical square in time for the 100th birthday of Helvetia. 1968, the 99th anniversary of Helvetia, was the year that Fosnacht was revitalized in Helvetia. It was an attempt to reconnect with the roots of the town after years of trying to make it clear that they were staunchly American. All right, it's time to talk about Fosnacht. Fosnacht is fairly well documented in game, but it leaves out some of the background for Fosnacht and why it's celebrated, so let's get into that. We'll start with the name, Fosnacht. Fosnacht is not the only name for the festival. It's also known in different regions as Fastnacht, Fasnacht, and Fasnacht. The basic meaning here is fast night, fast as in fasting or abstaining. The last fat stores left over from the winter are consumed at this time because the practitioners are planning on abstaining from eating certain foods over the upcoming period of 40 days, Lent. Fasnacht is a pre-Lenten festival in the vein of Carnival and Mardi Gras. The way these festivals are celebrated seems to me to be at least partially based on the climate. Fasnacht involves parading fully clothed, wearing masks made out of wood or paper mache through the still chilly streets of Central Europe, while Carnival has scantily clad revelers dancing through the tropics. The masks of Fasnacht in Europe seem to lean heavily into mnemonic imagery or imagery of spring as these pre-Lenten festivals take place close to the dawn of spring. With a more general concept of Fasnacht covered, let's talk about Helvetian Fasnacht, which seems to be a combination of the traditional Fasnacht and the Swiss Zexelauten festival. Zexelauten, celebrated in Zurich, culminates with the symbolic burning of winter. This symbol of winter is the bug, a rag doll in the form of a snowman with a head filled with explosives. The bug is set aflame, with the flames eventually spreading to the head, which causes it to explode. The burning of the bug is also used as a weather oracle in the vein of Groundhog Day. In this case though, instead of trusting in the prognostication of a large rodent viewing its shadow, the time from the lighting of the bug to its head exploding is utilized. A quick time from lighting to explosion means a long warm summer, while a protracted time means a cold and rainy one. Helvetia has combined these two concepts since 1968, although Old Man Winter has replaced the bug, and from what I could find, he doesn't explode. Helvetia is also home to a ramp dinner. No, it's not a celebration of inclined planes, it's a dinner to make use of the local ramp population. For a lot of you, that probably didn't clear things up, and it didn't for me in the beginning. The ramps we're talking about here are a form of wild onion or wild leek or wild garlic. The name ramp, or ramps, seems to be a relative of ramson, which is the name for the European bear leek. Ramp season runs from late winter to early spring, a fairly short window, and provides a bounty for those willing to forage for them. For those of you in Appalachia watching this, I would hazard to guess that most of us living outside of Appalachia or its neighboring regions haven't ever heard of ramps, so if you're wondering why I'm explaining all this, that's why. Helvetia, along with the other sites in the region, hosts a community dinner cooking ramps and serving them alongside other foods. Before leaving Helvetia behind, I have a couple of closing remarks. First, the people at Bethesda that replicated Helvetia and the Fallout universe did an amazing job. Though it's obviously not fully recreated here, from what I could tell, the essence of the town is intact. Second, I definitely plan to visit West Virginia someday. In this hypothetical trip, I've always had plans to visit certain places, namely the Cranberry Wilderness, the Greenbrier Resort, Harper's Ferry, Charleston, and really whatever other places I could fit in. But Helvetia has now moved to the top of that list of places I want to see. If I can make it there sometime after the pandemic has ended and the Fosnock celebrations have resumed, I'm going to make that happen. Anyway though, that should do it for Helvetia. If you want notifications when I launch these lore videos, you can follow me at Gaming with Maps on Twitter. If you appreciate what I do here and you desire to assist me financially, you can sign up to be a patron on Patreon. The links for both my Twitter and Patreon are in the About section for this channel and in the description of this video. This has been the Irresolute Cartographer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.